practice. <laughs> first day at camp, what stood out to you most about the day? Uh, the intensity. Um, you know, Coach, you know, we really got after it today, up and down, both courts. Um, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been good, man. Guys communicating, happy to be here, excited. You know, I think you know, we, got, we got a lot of potential you know, to, to do big things, but it starts with days like today, and JB set the tone early, and, you know, we really got after it, and we got another one tonight. You keep mentioning, like, intensity, setting the tone. Obviously, every coach does training camp different. You know, what, this is your sixth training camp now. Was this different than other training camps have been a part of? For sure. I mean, because, you know, when I came into the league, you know, we had, even throughout my five years, we had guys who were, you know, on the older part of 20 and then into 30. So, you know, what we're doing here necessarily wouldn't, you know, be the same over in, in Utah just because of age and because of guys slowly getting into it. So uh, it's an initial shock when you're running up and down on both fours. But after that, I guess I'm, I'm not that old. So I'm, I'm I'm, I'm good, so um, yeah, but it's like you said, like JB said, like from the jump, you know, setting the tone, especially defensively, a lot of defensive principles, little things, techniques, and, and finding ways to get after it, and then, like I said, we'll get after it again tonight, but, you know, it's a little different just because the guys are younger, we have, we're able to run and, and get out a little bit more. JB mentioned that, you know, these guys are a little quiet. Do you think that you're most vocal guy off the, off the rip here? Uh, I, would, I would say, you know, one of the, you know, I think, Ev, Ev, Darius, Jay, the quiet guys, but they, they were talking today, you know, continuing to find ways to expand their game, not just on the floor, but with, the, with their voice and whatnot. And, you know, that's the biggest thing because you just got to be a little uncomfortable day by day until they become habits, um, you know. And for me, maybe not talking, maybe it's something else. For them, maybe it's talking. For, for the other guys, it's something else. But, you know, that's the whole part of training camp, we're starting to grow and build into these habits in October. So when you get to April, May, and June, you know, they're, you know, they're habits for you. I think you can bring it out of them? I think so. I think honestly, I don't think I have to do much. JB's done, doing a great job just on the first day. Like you look at like Ev's out there screaming and yelling and, and, and trying to get. Like, I, I, I tip, I've known Ev since he was in high school, and I've probably heard him say five things before before we got here. And now he's he's talking and communicating and getting to a spot. Jay is the same way, and Darius is a hell of a leading man running around and you know talking and communicating. So you know I don't have to do much, but I, I will use my voice when when needed. But JB is you know he's getting the best out of us. This is the first day, and looking forward to uh, a great training camp. JB described what almost sounds like an open tryout for the starting small forward spot. What's that like to be a part of a training camp where there is essentially an open competition for a starting spot? I think it brings the best out of us. I think that's only going to make us better as a group. I don't think it's going to look at it in a, in a negative way. I think guys will approach it the right way. And, you know, whoever, whoever it may be, you know, this, this, you gotta, you got to earn it and you got to work for it. But that's ultimately not only going to help the guys trying out for the three spot, but also everybody around the team. Because the guys, like I said, the intensity is going to be high. Every possession is going to matter. Every practice, every situation, little details. And you're doing that now. Like I said, that's going to pay dividends down the line when you get to those three and fours or fives and sevens and you're, you're tired, but, you know, you're back to what you – you know what you've been working on. You know, ultimately, you know, you know we have depth in that in that way as well. So it's going to be exciting and it's good to watch. And you know, it's going to bring the best out of everybody. You were in Nashville uh, for the camp um, right after the trade. How helpful was that to be around the guys just from the get go, coming into yeah. camp, kind of already building that? Yeah, big time. You know, just even and I didn't I didn't play pick up. You know, just being around and watching and communicating, laughing, like building that camaraderie. You know, within like the first two or three days from being traded, like, you know, that's that's really all it is. You know, typically, you know, for my past five years during that time, like right before I got traded and a little bit during that August time is when I, teammates will come and work out, whether it's in Miami or, or L.A. or whatever it is. And this team's already done that. Guys have already done that. Um, but I didn't know where I was going. So, you know, I, as soon as I found out, I wanted to make sure, like, that's a big part of it, you know, and the court's going to be the court. You're going to figure out the five-on-five -five stuff. But once you build the relationships and the bonds and the trust off the floor, that carries to, and that adds to what you do on the floor. Does today kind of feel like the new kid at school type day for you since it's your first time here? Or does the stuff in Nashville and kind of knowing the guys because it's a small league in a sense, as you mentioned before, kind of alleviate that at all? It's not, I wouldn't say it's completely new because I think, I think like you said, we went to Nashville as a group. You know, I was able to be a part of the guys and see the guys. Well, so I've known a lot of the guys earlier um, in my career as well. But, you know, it's definitely new things. Trying to figure out what to say on defense, you know, because 
Quinn Snyder has a plethora of words that no one else in the league probably <laughs> uses. Um, so trying to figure out the terminology and that stuff, I think that's the part where I'm trying to get used to. Um, knowing the plays is easy. I've been watching the film since I got traded, but now figuring out, okay, what does it mean when I'm in help? What does it mean? Like, where am I speaking? What are the principles? Like, that's the stuff that, you know, I think is going to take a little bit of adjustment to. But, you know, when you communicate with coach, other guys on the team, and just watch, you know, start to figure it out. Anything? Anybody say anything funny or anything that you'll remember from your first day? <sighs> just like even if you got uh, lost or something or what? I mean, yeah, just uh, like, you know, like Coach Buck. He was. I was supposed to say nail when I'm at the, when I'm at the help of the nail, and I, he said, "What is it?" Like I, I was playing live. I didn't know what the hell I was saying. <laughs> I was just like, "Help X something." Like you know, I'm just standing there, uh, just trying to figure it out. But I think that's one of the funniest moments because I was just saying something. Like that's the biggest thing I tell people. Like if you don't know what to say, just scream. Like just say something that way. Like you know, you're used to talking, and then when you figure it out, you know, it comes naturally. Donovan, as somebody who's seen Evan as a high schooler and seeing him now, what stands out to you? He's much better. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like he's, he was really good in high school, and he's really, really good now. Um, I think for him, you know, there's little things that he obviously can improve on technique and stuff like that. But his natural feel for the game, uh, as a defender, as an offensive player, like you know, there's certain things you just can't teach. Obviously, you, we all know the size and the quickness and the speed of whatnot and his length. But you know, for, for me, just you know, the instincts of knowing where to be. And this is just after one year of being in the league. Like that's not always the case for a guy who's. Just turn, well, he just turned 21. He just turned 21. Like that's not always the case. So, you know, he's got a lot of lot of potential in a lot of areas. But you know, we really didn't do offense as much today. You know, I wasn't really in his group. But you know, from what I saw in Nashville and from playing pickup when I came back here, um, and then even today, like there's just little things that he does that you just can't teach him, and makes teaching even easier because he's able to pick up on stuff and. and Better I've been, obviously, the, the core of this team is young. Um, this team is still looking to, to make the playoffs. As someone that's been there and, and, and been somewhat deep in them before, what will feel like enough to you for this year as far as either expectations or kind of, you know, I imagine that you'd love to go as far as you could. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I can't, I can't say, yeah. say I, enough would be, you know, a conference final. Enough is a championship, you know, playing into June, you know. And you, you do your best to go out there and find a way to do just that. You know, like I said, I've fallen short of that goal for five years. And, you know, it may happen this year, it may not. You know, but at the end of the day, I know and we know in this locker room we're going to put our 100% best effort. And that's all you can do. You know, all you can do is put the groundwork and lay the groundwork and continue to build. Um, you know, and on top of that, you got to get lucky at times, too. Health is a big thing. You know, there's certain, you know, shots may fall one night, may not fall for a series, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, but understanding that if you continue to put your your foundation and do your work, you know you can always hang your hat on that. You know regardless of the, with the result. Um, but I, I definitely believe that the championship is the goal, not just for myself but for this team. And you know we don't play this game to, to just you know just make the playoffs. And you know I think that that's what's so special about this group is you know we see that even though we're young, you know we have championship aspirations. And you know like I said, we just got it starts with days like today, and it's going to continue to build. And it's not going to be perfect. You know there's going to be ups and downs from all of us, but you know, continuing, like I said, to build upon day by day, week by week. And if you see us grow continually, you know, that's what we can be happy about, continuing day by day. You, sometimes you can't control the results. Sometimes shots don't fall. Sometimes team you know, shoots 65, 70% of the field, whatever it may be. But if you can control what you can and go out there and do it day by day, you can be happy. JP um, mentioned that, I, I asked him whether he had plans to stagger you and Darius, and he was saying, I, I plan to have at least one of those guys on the court all the time. Um, what will, what should we expect to see in the moments where you guys are together? And obviously, there's a little bit less just on your shoulders. And what should we expect when you're out there by yourself? Um, you know, when we're together, you know, I mean, it, I don't think it changes. Regardless, I think we have even Darius now on the floor together, continuously moving the ball. Um, I think our presence commands a lot of attention on both sides of the on the floor, which will help a lot as far as spacing, getting to the paint, finding guys, creating whatever it may be. Um, but even when one of us is off the floor, we got guys like we got Howell Meadow, we got Dylan, we got Mar, we got we got Chetty, we got guys like you know that can really get in there and create and find a knockdown shot. So you know I think the biggest thing is just being able to play unselfishly as a group. You know I don't think it's you know it's just a dare, it's just a Donovan thing or it's your turn, my turn. It's more so like finding a group and collective and how that's going to work. And that's what training camps for. You know um, figuring out the lineups that work, figuring out who plays well together, what spacing, what spacing looks like, and whatnot. So. 
um, just continue to be unselfish. You know, that's the biggest thing is you come in here and you can come in here and, and look at it like, all right, like, this is what I did in Utah, this is what you did here, and let's figure, no, it's more like, no, let's collaborate, do this together as a group, because ultimately that's how, you know, you take it to the next level. You said there was not much offense today. Um, what do you want to do better defensively this year than you have in the past, and, and how do you think you can help the team the most? I think a lot of it for me is focus, attention to detail. And, you know, like I said, I said it on the radio the other day, like, you know, a lot of it, like you just said, is, you know, I don't have to do as much offensively, you know, so I'm able to lock in, you know, on those possessions, and I'm not tired, and as tired, uh, getting in better shape to be able to play both sides of the ball. It's not, it's not the ability. You know, I can play defense. You know, I know that for a fact, and I haven't shown that, and that's what I'm looking forward to do here, and, you know, the top five defense. I'm not here to bring that down to six, seven, eight, nine. You know, we're here to can, if not, if not go five, four, three, or two, or one. So find a ways to do that, and it starts with a little thing. It's just attention to detail, keep my man in front, um, be in there, making the extra effort to contest. Um, and that's, that's ultimately what my, my goal is here as one of the leaders on this team and to continue to put forth that effort on both ends. Kevin mentioned yesterday he FaceTimed you on the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> what did that mean just to, that he did, I mean, he didn't waste any time, obviously. Yeah, it, was like, no. it was like five, five, ten minutes after. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I've known K-Love throughout the, throughout right. the years. We right. worked out with, with Chris Brickley out in uh, New York. So um, I had, believe it or not, I had just seen him like a week prior. And had, we had no no clue or whatever. So. Um, just to have that, you know, it's, it's welcoming, you know, it, it means a lot. And, you know, have a guy like K-Love who's, who's been to a championship, won a championship, and understanding that I can be that piece that kind of takes us to the next level, that makes makes you feel good, you know, mm -hmm. it makes you feel like, you know, wanted and appreciated, and that's always good. But, you know, it's, it's great to have that, build that camaraderie early, like I said, because, you know, we had that in Utah. We had a lot of guys that got along and understood things, and it helped a lot on the floor. We go out to eat every road trip or playing Xbox, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I know Kev's part of that playing Xbox, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, that's huge, you know, it goes a long way and, you know, when we get on the floor, everything just starts to become seamless because you have that relationship early. When you said you'd seen him the week before, was that a workout or something? Or I, I want to say I came home um, for an Adidas event and mm -hmm. I just saw him in passing. Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't like we worked out together, it was just more like he was done and I, mm -hmm. I was, I, maybe it was a week or two weeks, but mm -hmm. it was it was definitely like right before him. It's kind of crazy. Another how foreshadowing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly crazy how life works. How the last rest of you on? I'm the, yeah, I didn't mean for this to be the last question, but where were you golfing when, when he called? Uh, I was in Miami. Um, what's the golf course out there? Uh, There's a lot of them. Doral? No, 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 no. <laughs> um, by the water park. Turn, Turnberry? Yeah, thanks, man. Trying to. I didn't. I didn't play well after that. <laughs> right down the middle, like you said. No, you said you no I, lied. I lied about that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably remember my round after that, to be honest. Thanks, everybody. Thank I you.